Welcome, everyone. I'm Marla Miller from MarlaMiller.com and Writer's Mama, presenting our second um, author interview show, 21st Century Authors and Book Promotion. I'm delighted uh, to have Dr. Mary Hill with me today, whose memoir, Girls in the Hood, was published, I believe, last um, fall, but, she, but she'll give us those details. Um, I first met Mary when she uh, came to the Santa Barbara Writers Conference a long time ago. And this year at the 50th anniversary conference, she's going to be presenting Girls in the Hood um, on a first book panel, which is just delightful. And um, we continued our professional relationship when uh, COVID shut us all down and I launched my uh, Zoom uh, read and critique workshops. Mary was in my first. She had to leave because Girls in the Hood promotion was coming up and she appreciated if she didn't before she appreciated how much time that takes but then she joined a second uh, reading critique group and um she's going to bring us up to date on the um story that she was able to craft you know like a lot um during her time with us and um i just want to read a little bit before i introduce her mary you're being so patient um, but I want to introduce Girls in the Hood because this show, as you know, we really don't talk about story. We talk about the process of getting that story published in the hands of you, um, our readers. Girls in the Hood is an unsentimental, unsentimental, moving and surprisingly humorous account of a girl and her 10 siblings who grew up in one of the roughest neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Mary's mother was a fierce matriarch a single mom who raised 11 children with the help of welfare checks and a firearm hidden in her bra. And then I'm gonna go down to, and remember this is Mary's memoir. This is a story of Mary, but even more so it's a story of her mother, a uniquely strong and extraordinary woman who was able to survive moments of pain and disappointment by laughing at the comedy of human missteps, miscalculations and downright stupidity. This is a story that's also about race and poverty and how over time it can wear you down and destroy you. Because although Mary got out okay, her sisters and brothers weren't so lucky. Um, with that, I'm going to welcome Dr. Mary Hill to our show. Welcome, Mary, I'm delighted you're here. Thank you, it's good to be here. Thanks for yeah. asking. Absolutely. Um, okay, so since this story, since this show is really focused on publishing, you are published by an independent press, um, and uh, you are represented by an agent. Could you give us just a little taste of what it was like to find the agent, and then how long it took to to um, get a commitment from a publisher? Uh, well, I practice going to agents at the Santa Barbara's Writer Workshop. There's a Santa Barbara Writer Workshop has, you can um, have agents look at your uh, query letter. Mm -hmm. And the uh, I saw that as kind of, yeah. yeah, I saw that as kind of batting practice. Good. And um, and, it, and it was good that I went to those because I, I got a sense of what's to be expected, what agents are like, what they expect, you know. Um, asking you questions like what's at stake here in the story, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, so I sort of, I went out there and I just start. I got on Query Tracker online and I saw agents that were uh, looking for the kind of thing I was writing, uh, okay. looking for memoirs, mm -hmm. looking for unique memoirs. Mm -hmm. And I queried probably um, 70 agents or so. And I had given myself, and it was, it was somewhat disheartening in the beginning because you're getting all these rejections, but- um, If they bother to send you a rejection. Exactly, some just yeah. don't bother to send no. you anything at all. No, they don't. And, um, but um, I kept all of my rejections because someday I'd like to write something about rejection. But anyway, yeah, I kept all of my rejections. Uh, if you're looking for a co-author on that one, <laughs> let me know because I've kept all of mine. Um, I, I mean, some are just, aren't they? Some of them are yeah. hilarious. Oh, yeah. um, and, uh, but, you know, some are just kind of like terse, like this is something that we're not interested in. And I had dozens and dozens of those things. And it, it was, it was very difficult to get someone to appreciate the story that I was telling. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I didn't get discouraged. I gave myself to a hundred. I said, if I get rejected by a hundred agents, who don't want to represent girls in the hood, 
I am going to self-publish my book. I decided that that was, I gave myself to a hundred. That was so and smart, so, Mary. Yeah. So <laughs> really somewhere around 70 or so. Yeah. Um, I'm, and I was really getting discouraged, but somewhere around 70 or so, um, I got three offers of representation all in the same month. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. And thrilling. Uh, was it thrilling? Yeah. Oh, it was great. It was great. I was, <laughs> I was yeah. so surprised. Yeah. I was so surprised. And um, one of the agents, she actually got, if you will, out of the business uh, before she could actually do anything with Girls in the Hood. And then there were two. And that's a lot. That's You're a lot. right it is. You from betcha. 70. And, um, and uh, I, 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 the, the first one, he said, you know, um, I can sell anything. Uh, and I, you know, you really got a great story. And I, he mm -hmm. took me to lunch and went out to Venice and took me to a restaurant. And he told me about all his other projects. And he was very, he was very bullish about Girls in the Hood. He was very on, on the project. Mm -hmm. And I was just so thrilled. And then I called up uh, another agent who, and I told her that I had this offer of representation. And she said, let me read this again. And she said, she said, let me read this again. And then she called up and she said, I want to be your agent. And I said, oh, I got Mary, can I just, I've, I've got to ask this question. What made you do that? That was really unusual for a writer to do that. And the fact that you did look at the result that you got, what, what propelled you to do that? Did someone encourage you to, because what you did was you went, I got something here. It's, you know, you're, it, that's called, that's called strategy, writers. That's called strategy. Okay, go on. I was reading industry books. Good. That said, if you get an offer uh, and that you're and you're really interested in a particular agent, let and they're still considering, mm -hmm. let that agent know that you have an offer. Good, excellent. And uh, and I it was kind of, I thought it was really difficult to like decide, and what made me decide on the agent that I went with. Um, was that she was so she she read it she read it twice <laughs> and a book she read it, and they're very Lovely. busy yeah and um and she we discussed like parts of the book that she enjoyed the other guy I could tell he had not really read the book yeah he wanted he liked the story but he didn't really read the story mm -hmm. and so I went with the agent who read the story Good. she's in New York her name's Andrew Sandberg she's wonderful and she I know the um, name well and she was she said you know I'm 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 with this project I'm gonna Lovely. you know I'm gonna Lovely. find a publisher for this project and um and then there's a project Wonderful. so <laughs> how long did it take to, for her to find a publisher about was a year it, was it nail biting for you yeah, I asked her, I said, what's the longest time you've ever, you know, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Good. And she said, um, she said, if I really believe in a project, she told me she kept sending out one particular project for five years. Is that right? And I said, oh, I don't really want to spend five years doing this. <laughs> because in your mind's eye, you already had an alternative. You would go down another road to publication mm -hmm. after an X yes. amount of time. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's being very pragmatic. So, and um, she in... sent it to, oh my goodness. She's sending, she sent me lists to everyone she was sending it to. She sent me lists. Lovely. She sent me um, uh, those who were encouraged. I think she like shielded me from some stuff actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, she sent me like the people, she sent me notes from the people that were positive. And some that said, oh, this was so good. And I enjoyed this so much, but we already have another project similar to this mm -hmm. kind of thing. And um, the ones that were not so positive, mm -hmm. she sort of shielded me. I got a sense that she was shielding me from that stuff. That's really nice. You know? Yeah, she's she's great. I mean, especially in, you know, the the goal of this of of this show is to offer our listeners who i assume most of them are writers on the road to publication but it's to offer them um, experiences of real life authors who are going down these different roads and my goal is to um offer positivity in whatever road you're going down i don't i don't want it to be i don't want to hear 
you know, the negative. I, I like the positive. And one of the things that you've said about this agent is what I learned about agents back in the 90s when I started writing, because like you, it was my second career, um, is that professional agents, agents who have um, time in this business uh, are, are like that. You know, they're they're professional. Um, and so it's nice to know that in 21st century publishing that they still exist. I'm I'm shopping two projects myself. And like you, I've got to, you know, I'm I, I'm gonna do it until I do it. Um however, the agents that I've pitched to who I know have a long history, they're the ones who always um, email me back or have their assistants email me back. And that's just being a pro. So I'm glad that you're, you're experiencing, uh, the same kind of thing. Now, did I, didn't I interrupt your thought or, or no, no, no. Okay, cool. I was listening. Okay. So what have you done for marketing? I know, what, I know a lot of what you've done because I see you in social media working hard, but <laughs> share with our audience, if you would. Uh, marketing has been this, I mean, there's a and public that, relations. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, there's a sense that um, you write it and then the marketing will take care of itself. Yeah. That is just not true. Mm -hmm. And so I learned from you in Santa Barbara uh, at the Santa Barbara workshop uh, at your marketing, the muse workshop that you do, yeah. Yeah. that you really, you got to get out there. You got to have, you, you have to have a social media present, uh, uh, presence and you have to, be on all of these platforms yeah. and um i the first time i even heard about platform building was from you yeah you you talked about platform building and the importance of it and um i remember being in that first workshop years ago going what's a platform yeah <laughs> and do i even want to hear this because it sounds so foreign and so unnecessary my time is more important right yes um, i mean it's, that's the initial it's, response yeah. From most writers, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't want it's to. It's been, it's been crazy. It's it's a, it's yeah. like learning a whole new industry within an industry. It's you know? exactly that, Mary. Yeah, I just it's been it's been insane. I and I found aspects of it that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like um, I I put together reels of my book and mm -hmm. um uh little short little like little commercials. And um, and I put them up on YouTube and I put them up on Facebook and I put them up on Instagram, put them up on Twitter and and um, and and they they were so much fun to shoot. I couldn't believe like these aspects of wonderful. creativity came into Wonder it wonderful. where I enjoyed that part. I didn't enjoy the part of, you know, you got to make an email list and you got to make a Web page. Um, when I tried to do my web page initially, that was a challenge too, because I didn't know how to build a web page. Yeah. And everyone was telling me I needed to have a web page. And um, I got all kinds of crazy estimates. People were like, oh, I'll build a web page for you for $5,000. I'm like, I don't have $5,000. And so, <laughs> so I got a couple of books. Yeah. I got a couple of books and DIY. And I built I built, yep. a, I built a web page mm -hmm. and I put stuff up on the web page. And um, so that, you know, and so it's all been a lot of like building blocks. I, I was kind of amazed at how, frankly, little the publisher did to promote the book <laughs> and, and that I was going to be out there promoting the book. You were going to be out there and whether you're uh, represented by a big house or a small house or whatever road you'd hybrid self, um, you are the major marketeer unless you have a tremendous uh, following and or you're an influencer or a celebrity. Uh, it's just the reality of 21st century publishing. It just is. And it has been for a lot longer than many writers um, think. Uh, the big houses really shut down marketing for anyone that wasn't, you know, a big seller. Because what, what writers have to remember, Mary, and you've heard me say this often in workshops, is that publishing Writing is creative. Publishing is a business and a business has to make money or it will cease to be a business. Mm -hmm. And writers have a hard time building bridges to their to their left and right brain. You obviously have not. Um, was there anything in your background that 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 um, you, you mentioned that you love shooting film? Now, I know that you were a, a, 
taught at USC. Did you happen to get it? Well, a I, of, I, yeah. um, I was sort of um, cinema school adjacent. Um, okay. Um, I, um, I live with a bunch of cinema people and I love yeah. movies. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I've done movie reviews and this kind of thing. Okay. And, but now I was kind of, if you will, and I'd written screenplays uh -huh. and taking classes. Okay. And now I was actually using those skills Wonderful. to market my, if you will, my product. Mm -hmm. And, um, because and it is a product. Me, yeah. To market my product. Yep. And, Absolutely. um, I, I had to like write little scripts and come up with graphics and make things interesting and exciting and choose music and all that. And that was actually a How fun. cool. Yeah. <laughs> that you were able to knit together two creative parts of you. That's very, very cool. Um, for those who don't know how to do that, there are certainly services. We won't go down that road. But before we end this, because I do have us on a timer um, and I could just keep talking to you. Um, but you'll have to come back. That's all. Um, but I want to talk about the project that did you say that your publisher now he has it in? No, the publisher, I've sent it to the editor. Okay. Um, um, my next one, my next, and, and by the way, it's Mary Hill Wagner, because that's what's on the book. Very good. Um, okay. H-I-L-L-W-A-G-N-E-R. So anybody okay. who reviews, if you read it and you like it, if you don't like it, keep it to yourself. And that's so- right. <laughs> But, but uh, go, to Amazon or... is, go to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Barnes you can and, Noble. To Amazon and review it. You can also review it on Goodreads. Because uh, next... aren't reviews important? Reviews are really important. Really, really important they're, writers. They're really, it's, it so really pay it is. forward. You know, Ray Bradbury yes. used to say and that. And I, I review other people's books too. At the too. LA Times Book Festival, I was busy walking around. I was doing a thing myself there, yeah, but I was there. busy walking around to all the authors that I knew. Mm -hmm. and making sure that I got their books and I signed their books and mm -hmm. I made a big deal about it. And I, I brought other people over to their tents. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know, because well, pay it forward. Absolutely um, pay it forward. Um, Mary, yeah. before you even, before you finish that thought though, I know that you've also, you speak a lot and you've, you've um, spoken at libraries and uh, you mentioned the uh, Los Angeles um, book festival. So you look for those ventures. Mm -hmm. And yes, it, I, I do. I, I do readings. Uh, I, I organize readings at bookstores and book festivals. <laughs> at, um, I these is part of promotion. Mm -hmm. And I found I enjoy that too, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of too. reader, direct reader engagement. Mm -hmm. And people come up to me telling me things that they pulled out of the book that I didn't even know was in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. my book. I didn't even Isn't know that it was cool? in there. And that they just love certain parts of it that that they interpret it through their own lens. So cool. That it was very fulfilling for them. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's when I'm, you, you I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you because I yeah. want you to give us a little taste of what's coming. Oh uh, yes, Grandma's hands. It's hands. Grandma's hands is a woman's fiction book that I wrote. I I pivoted from the memoir to fiction, and it's about three grandmothers raising their grandchildren. And um, and I've enjoyed it, and I uh, and and uh, I was helped to develop it in your workshops. I really I we appreciate had fun. that. Thank you very much. It's you now very with welcome. an editor, and yeah. then it's gonna go through the process. We're gonna do the whole thing all over again. Yep. So <laughs> and then you're gonna do it all over again with the next one, Mary, because yes. I would say if I were a betting woman, I would say hold on, that's our timer, and we're just about done. Um, if I were a betting woman, I would say that uh, you have several more books in you, and I look forward to chatting with you about each and every one of them, because it's a, it's a hard enough life out here, um, and developing networks of writers and supportive people who like your work and believe in, in your talents, it's important. You know, it's always been important, but it's really important now with everyone screaming, you know, how do you how do you pop up above the noise? And I hope that 21st century authors um, and book promotion is, you know, going to contribute a tiny, tiny bit. And so with that, I will say again, thank you, Mary. Dr. Thank Mary you. Hill Wagner, who's um, you can find Girls in the Hood. Did you want to hold that up? 
Girls in the Hood. There's Girls in the Hood, and you can find it at all the usual bookseller places. Um, thank you very much. And I'll see you soon at the Santa Barbara Writers Conference. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Marla. Bye-bye. You're Bye -bye. very welcome. Bye.